Hey guys, Half Chrome Drones here today. We're gonna talk about how we measure thrust on some of our drones. We've got a Phantom 3 strapped up. We've got a couple of other drones that we're gonna test. Uh, Chris has engineered uh, this wonderful piece of uh, equipment. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about it? So yeah, this is what we use to measure drone thrust. Now a lot of people talk about setups like this, but haven't found much online and really how to do this well. So what we did is we set up something like a seesaw. We strap the drone down here, make sure the zip ties are nice and tight. Drone pulls up, it pivots about this point right here in the middle, and pushes down on this scale over here. Now you might say, well that's just a cheap scale you got on Amazon. Well it is, but we checked it out with some cheap weights we got on Amazon and it read perfectly. But what about the cheap weights? Well, took those in to a calibrated scale and those weights are actually perfect. So have some good confidence in the setup. We got everything leveled out. So we're gonna measure some drone thrust. Let's and do it. Yeah, and we brought some popcorn along too, just to make it more interesting. Get your popcorn ready. All right, that was a lot of fun. So now we're gonna take this setup into a little more controlled environment in the basement and actually measure some thrust of a bunch of different drones. We're gonna show you those results. To the Half Chrome Labs. Okay, I know you're dying to see the results, but before I'm going to show you the numbers, I'm going to talk about a couple more features of the thrust setup that we have here. Now first of all, you may have been wondering, what are these weights doing down here at the end? Well, let's see what happens if we don't have those. Okay, like any good seesaw, you can see the big guy on the end here. It's going to tilt everything up if we don't have a little more weight on that end. So what we do is we add a little bit more weight, and then we just zero out our scale to make sure we're ready to start measuring. Now another feature I haven't talked about yet is these nice thin arms we have here. They look thin, they look rather uh, wide from the front view, but when you look down from the top, everything's nice and thin. Now why is that? Well, let's say I just wanted to maybe tape or zip tie the drone directly to a scale on a tabletop. The problem is all that downdraft is gonna be messing up all the measurements, actually pushing down on the scale when we want to be lifting up on the scale. So it's going to give you a bad reading. So what we try to do is make everything nice and thin as you look from the top. Try to make it as accurate a test as possible. Now let's take a look at those results. Okay, enough with the suspense. Let's talk about how these drones actually did. First up, let's talk about the spark. Now, you might notice this isn't a real spark. Our real spark is in Tennessee right now with Jack doing a little bit of flying. So I've got our plastic mock-up here, a 3D CAD model you can get on our website, halfchrome.com, if you're interested. But uh, that's not the real thing. But how did the real thing do? As you can see, we did test it, had a thrust to weight ratio of 1.9. That's enough to bring it home in a pretty stiff breeze, I'd say, and enough to make the drone fly well, especially in sport mode, it's pretty quick. Let's see next, the Mavic. So of course, everybody wants to know how the Mavic did. Well, it weighs about twice as much as the Spark, but has more than that twice as much thrust. With a thrust to weight ratio of 2.5, this thing can really kick some butt. And, uh, Next up, Phantom 3 Pro is what we measured. Uh, Phantom 4 Pro has more thrust than this. Uh, Phantom 3 Pro also came in with a ratio of 2.5, exactly the same as the Mavic. And uh, it weighs, again, one and a half or two times as much as the Mavic. So this thing generates a ton of thrust. 
Now, let's switch gears to some much smaller drones. Uh, these guys are standouts. You might be wondering, why are we talking about these little toy drones? Well, the Esheen E011, uh, finally somebody's making a durable uh, little drone anybody can get, uh, and you can throw a camera on there and fly FPV around your house. Super cheap. Comes with a random little Lego-esque guy on there. You throw that out, you put on a camera, you can have a ton of fun. This little drone has a ratio of 2.2. So it beats the heck out of the induct Inductrix FPV and uh, this drone's predecessor, the E010, that had smaller motors and a smaller battery. Drone is totally worth checking out. Uh, everybody should have one of these, even if you have a DJI product. Okay, let's get back into some little more serious drones. Let's work our way up to the, some racers. Where'd it go? I got the King Kong. So this little uh, 90 millimeter drone, thrust to weight ratio of 3.0, very quick. Definitely puts it squarely in the racer category. It hangs out well there. Uh, this drone here, Force One. Now this is the DYS XDR220. And uh, Force One puts together a package drone for beginners for this drone if uh, you want a real racer. Now with a 3S battery, this uh, thrust to weight ratio I think was in the mid threes. Um, but with the 4S battery, kicks thrust to weight ratio up over five. We measured thrust to weight ratio 5.3. So uh, yeah, breakneck speeds with this guy, ton of power. So stepping back a little bit, we've got here Force 100 from Force One, a uh, very similar drone to the Bugs 3 up there, the red drone. And uh, it comes in with a thrust to weight ratio of 2.7. So that's actually better than the Phantom, better than the Mavic. Uh, so this drone, a lot of fun to fly, no frills, brushless motor drone. Now if you throw a camera on there, like a GoPro or one of the uh, MJX cameras that you can put on this drone, uh, it, it's going to bring that ratio lower. It's going to be back in uh, down there maybe with the Spark, for example. But point is this drone has some lifting power for um, just over a hundred bucks. You can get these drones and they're a lot of fun to fly. Recommend you check those out if you're on a bit of a budget and you want to start experimenting. So that's it. That's the wrap up. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. I got to clean up all these zip ties now and uh, we're gonna be updating the website with more stuff. If you like this, if you want more technical testing of drones, you wanna learn more about what we're doing here at Half Chrome, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website, halfchrome.com.